Um, okay, listen, Peter Dawes, we've been seeing this, and it's all over. Verizon is on strike, and uh, um, they're out on the picket line. Peter Dawes is with us right now. I think, Peter, a lot of people are wondering, uh, you know, we like to support uh, we like to support the unions, and, and it's, these are labor issues, and... Uh, but I, we always like to know what what we're supporting, what we're involved with. What's the what's the what are the issues at hand here for Verizon employees? Well, you know the greedy unions. We we always want more money. We want to break the company. But um, beyond yeah. that, the yeah. real issue this time is uh, jobs. Um, it's a very popular topic right now with the presidential campaign, keeping jobs in this country, keeping jobs in the community, and that's really what we're after. Are you, um, I, I, you're seeing this um, all over as technology is moving so quickly, the deals, the labor deals, the, uh, the companies just can't seem to keep up with it. The union's hard to keep up with. Uh, like, you know, you saw it in Hollywood. They were all over, yeah, we're making the money on the movies, but, uh, but all of a sudden it shows up on a DVD and it shows up on streaming, and we're not making any money on that stuff. Is this part of what's happening here? Is, has the cell phone world take it, uh, taken over Verizon? There's plenty of uh, room for cell phones. Obviously, everybody you know has one at this point. The markets are saturated. But there's also uh, a great need for the wireline business, which is uh, the workers that are out on strike right now. Um, it, the yeah. best example of that is the frontier purchase of the Verizon assets in California, Texas, and Florida. Um, no sooner did they take over those three properties uh, at, at, that they announced they're hiring almost 10,000 workers so that they can upgrade and provide more fiber optic service to the customers that were forgotten by Verizon when Verizon owned those, uh, those states. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to tell you, uh, I know a way that, uh, that could really solve a lot of the issues uh, right here in central New York, and that is if they would add... Fios, if Verizon would finally say we're going to commit this technology to the Mohawk Valley and the greater Utica region. Listen, we, we've been literally begging. Uh, we, we've gone to the point where we were holding town halls last year. Uh, the Public Service Commission has finally agreed to hold hearings on exactly what they're doing with their money. This is a company that made $1.8 billion last month. It would cost between 200 and $500 million dollars completely cover this area with fiber optics what in the world are they doing with the money yeah i, I think it was uh, assemblyman brindisi did a uh, uh, really was was speaking out publicly in the beginning i'm like well why is the government really even getting involved in this but i totally understand what he's saying is that you know we are so far behind other areas um the, uh, upstate new york deserves the fastest internet speed out there um, we deserve that, and you know, I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on a cable network right now. That at 8 a.m. when everybody comes down into the lobby, I'm in Orlando. When 8 a.m. when everybody comes into the lobby, all of a sudden we get the hiccups on air, and the and the sound uh, degrades because that's what happens with high speed internet on cable. Where FiOS, it's uh, that doesn't happen, right? That's correct. The the capacity, the bandwidth on FiOS is tremendous compared to the coax that uh, companies like Time Warner continue to use. Um, the Syracuse, Albany, Buffalo, New York City, all these communities up and down the throughway uh, have been given files. Utica was skipped over. I, I don't know why this company thinks that the Utica customers are any worse than, uh, you know, Syracuse or, or Albany. Yeah. Can, can I ask right, a question so, about... Uh, Go ahead. No, I, I just want to ask, I, I've seen for quite some time now, at least a couple of weeks, there's a, a continual uh, marching that goes on at the location on Broad Street in the city of Utica. I know yesterday there was uh, some picketing going on outside of the Verizon store at Seneca Turnpike. Can I ask you, those who are picketing, do they are they working at all? Are they receiving checks? Are they picketing when they're not on the clock? Can you talk about what's actually going on? Who's working at the stores while all this is happening, we're on strike. Uh, so the guys that you see on the picket line have made a conscious decision to not collect the paycheck. And um, it, we've got bills, we've got mortgages, we've got families. The company has decided to cancel our health insurance as of May first. So you know we've got issues that are 
are going to need to be attended to. Um, we've been out on strike since the 13th. We've been picketing prior to that. We would picket in the mornings uh, before we went to work and on lunch, uh, trying to move the negotiations along. We've been talking since last June. Our contract expired last August, and it just got to the point where we felt they put us in a position where we had to walk off the job. So those who work in the yeah. stores, those they are not choosing to be on strike. Those who are still the working. Wireless, the wireless stores themselves, those people in this area haven't joined the union yet. We're trying to get a first contract for the wireless workers down in New York City. Uh, once that happens, we're going to actively pursue uh, bringing the people in upstate to the union. Uh, the people that are on strike are the wire line workers, uh, and those are covered by the contract currently, uh, and that's who you see walking on the picket line. And, Bill, you'll remember... You know that I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. When we were in New York City, yeah. when we were broadcasting, we thought there was a parade at 6 o'clock in the morning. It was actually this Verizon strike with a drum. Yeah. They were beat, banging the drum, and they were oh, there was a lot of workers down there. Let me ask you, uh, we're talking to Pete Dawes. Peter Dawes is with Verizon and uh, with the union, and uh, there is uh, striking going on all over over uh, with the Verizon employees. Uh, what is the, uh, we are looking at a, at a, at a world where the, uh, the landline is disappearing. I think the number I saw in USA Today was we're down to 54% of people in America still have a landline. But those that don't have switched to something else, and in many cases, if they had Verizon, they might have switched to a Verizon um, IP-based uh, uh, phone service. So, what is the has that affected this? Is 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 corporate saying you know because of the loss of the landline we don't need you line guys anymore, or is it now more than ever important? Uh, your job is is busier than ever. What where where are they and what's the company saying? They they're trying to say that, but again, uh, the the loss of the landline is a false statement. Um, keep in mind that cellular service while. Uh, your phone might not be connected to any wires. The tower certainly is. And that is a right. landline service. We service that tower and provide a landline back to the office, and then uh, the traffic, whether it be data or voice, still continues to travel over landlines until it gets to the tower that puts it back out again. Uh, so there's that. There's also the fact that the capacity on a cell tower uh, is limited to whatever they can pump into it, and then that's split amongst every single customer that's on that tower. So if they tell you that one tower can put out 100 meg, that's entirely true. But if you have 100 people trying to pull data off of that tower, that's one meg piece. So when it comes right. to hardcore data usage, you really still need the fiber optic line. You still need the high-speed Internet for businesses and learning and medical purposes. Yeah. And if you're trying to put in a, a T1 line right now, you are, I would imagine you really would be affected because they're going to be bringing people in that are not regular employees, and there could very well be a learning curve there and a service curve. Uh, do you agree with that? I'm looking at a guy sitting in a van right now who we're picketing, and he came straight out of the PR department. His boots are nice and shiny. He's never worn a work boot in his life, and he'll admit that, I think. Um, these people, not only is service affected, but safety is affected. These guys, it takes years to learn how to do this job. Uh, both from a technical standpoint um, and from a safety standpoint. And we're just seeing all kinds of nonsense out in the field. Uh, somebody's going to get hurt. Services are being delayed. It's, they're trying to scotch tape what they can. But you know, one of our local guys, uh, one of local managers who's forced to work, admitted the other day that he had to go back on a trouble three times, uh, three days in a row, because he just couldn't figure it out. And Doesn't then, this is the stuff that our guys, you know, they could tell you within a couple of hours what's going on and get it fixed. Doesn't that ultimately cost the company more money, though, Peter? It does, but you need to understand that for Verizon, again, they made $1.8 billion last month. And that's after they, you know, paid my obscene wages and my obscene medical and all the stuff that they'll tell you. It's not about money. It's about winning for them. And that's that's what's so frustrating. Um, we yeah, want to go back to work. We, these guys... This, this is a great group of guys that I that I work with. Um, these are the guys that two o'clock in the morning, cold breaks in the middle of some uh, back road somewhere, and it's ten below zero. These are the guys go out and set that pole. Um, they want to work for a living, and uh, unfortunately, it's not about the money for Verizon. It's just about 
yeah. establishing their dominance over the union. I, I do have to say, uh, I was out to dinner last week, and um, just to show you what, what you're dealing with with these Verizon guys, um, I ran into a retired Verizon lineman. Um, a guy would come in and set up whether it's IP or work lines. Or, or this guy went so far over and above for us and worked so hard that um, I only knew him through ordering lines, uh, T1 lines. But um, we had, uh, the guy was so great to us, and the service was so awesome. And so personal. at this time where personal service just disappears, the local guys, I always have said, the Verizon's local guys are awesome. And they go out of their way to help you, even when you can't get help when you're dialing an 800 number, knows where you're ending. Uh, they're there for you, and these are the guys that are out on the picket line right now. So I certainly support you and uh, wish you guys the best out there. Thank you. We really appreciate you taking the time to hear us. All right, Peter. Thanks so much. Good luck, and We'll take a break. Thanks. Come right back. WIBX.